How's it going people? Welcome back to AFTV and welcome back to the warm-up. We've got a League Cup game here this Wednesday evening. I'm back with Cecil and James to round it all up, give us our thoughts. Mm. What are we saying? It's, uh, it's a game I'm a bit more excited about now that we've got a couple, well a couple, we've got ourselves six points in the league. Um, started well since international break. So I kind of, like this feels refreshing coming in a weird way. Like. When everyone was playing their Europa League and Champions League ties last week, there was a little part of me that was like, yeah, Arsenal are missing here in the week. Um, I'm so, glad you didn't say Conference League. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> but to be back um, just in a different competition, see some different players, hopefully progress. It's a competition I want to win. Um, yeah, I'm quite excited about it. You know yeah. what, when we went into that West Brom League Cup game, we were in a very, let me not say very different, we were in a different place. Because mm. going into that game, couple of losses, no goals scored. Mm. It didn't look great with Man City around the corner and international break coming up. But now we've got two wins, like James said. Now we've got six points. Slightly better performances, Cecil. Mm. How are you feeling going into this Wimbledon game? Do you know what? I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually looking forward to it, Turks. I'm going to be completely honest. Obviously, I went to the West Brom game with Robbie um, and I really enjoyed that game. The 6-0, I, really, I saw a style of play from Arsenal. We had quite a strong squad out um, during that game. Uh, but I know that people are going to say it was West Brom's B team, whatever, whatever, whatever. But it was nice to see loads of goals. The team looked full of confidence. Um, again, there was a style of play. The, the goals weren't a set piece or a lucky goal that we, which we've kind of seen in in in, um, in the league. They were actually nice, good, good free flowing goals. So I expect to see that on Wednesday against AFC Wimbledon. I've, I've watched AFC Wimbledon um, ahead of this game and. They, they, it's, it's not a hot tough position. I think many people watching will understand that as well. So yeah, I'm excited to see and just and just quickly on that as well. Robbie Famous made a, last words. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Robbie made a point on the fan cam uh, at the Burnley game, and he was like, having no Europe actually benefits this side right now because they can set themselves up. They have a full week of training. They're ready for the game on the weekend. I know this is midweek, and it could kind of differ towards the biggest game I think that Arteta is going to have um, at the North London derby this uh, this this Sunday, but. If the side I've chose, if he goes with just players that aren't going to be involved in that game, we have a quality, enough quality in, that, in the team to put on a really good display. So I'm excited. Line up, lineup's going to be a massive discussion. And we're going Very to get, we're going to get yeah. into that shortly. But I think the lineup is determined by how important this game is, how important is it for us fans, how important is it for Arteta, mm. and how important is it for consistency in terms of the current start in 11 we've seen against Norwich and, and um, Burnley. You said, you know, you want to win the competition. I want to win every oh, competition yes. I'm in. Facts. But at the same time, I know this squad lacks a bit of depth in key areas. Yeah. Um, what would you um, do against Wimbledon? Like, how important is it to you? Do you, do, you, yeah. do you take it as, you know, every game as it comes or are you looking at the Tottenham game as, you know? My, my, my feeling is, there's very little roots for genuine success this season for Arsenal. Um, I don't really care what anyone says, if you win the Europa League, yes, yeah, not where we, we want to be playing our football, but that's con that constitutes very decent success and a successful season for Arsenal. We're not in it this year. So you're looking at an FA Cup, which I know we've won four and seven or, or whatever, four and eight, um, but you can't bank on that when teams like City take that really seriously. Chelsea always seem to make the final. Um, you've always got United getting to the semi, so that's always going to be tough. And then the Carabao Cup, which has been won by City the last four occasions, that's never going to be easy to win. I think if you could just get your hands on one of those and then challenge for the top four, maybe finish fifth or sixth, you've got to say that's a very good season for Arsenal for not where the club belongs, but where the current state of the team is and where that big four, and I'm going to say big four, not big six, where that big four in the Premier League are right now. Ronaldo leading the line for one. Lukaku leading the line for the European champions, yeah. Liverpool and Klopp, Pep Guardiola yeah, doing yeah. Pep things. Like, that's another realm. And hopefully we might get there next year. So this year, while it's not where I want Arsenal to be, and, and I'm not going to be saying it's a great season for Arsenal Football Club, but if we can get into those European spots and win a cup, something. Yeah. I think you've got to say for a young squad, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, because you, you talk about the European spots, you know, the three competitions we're in, mm. I think we're all in agreement that there's no chance of winning one of them, and that's the Premier League. So we're looking at European spots at the best in yeah. terms yeah. of the Premier League. Cup competition. And then it leaves you two cups. Yeah, Cecil, yeah. how important is the League Cup to you? For me, it's a, 
Turkey is important. I think I think many of the fans. Is it more well. important to you this season than it would have been five years ago? Because we're not in Europe. Of course, and of course, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm no Arsenal to be in the Champions League nights and and those sort of days. Like, that's important trophy. This isn't to me back in the day. I wouldn't care about this. Play the youngsters. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Play all of the youngsters. Like, but now, <laughs> now I'm kind of saying that as well. <laughs> but obviously, with a bit more experience in there because the youngsters are obviously holding us up. But we need the best players playing. Um, sorry, excuse me, that's the wrong wrong term. We need a strong side for this game because I want to see us win. I want us to take this cup competition seriously. We must do like. Uh, so I, we I'm going to be honest. I slightly disagree. I know I just went on this whole no Europe. So this yeah. is kind of our main avenue. I, but that was more trying to give context to what success could mean for Arsenal this season. But in terms of how much I care about winning this, I'm one of those fans that the Carabao Cup is a trophy, is one of four, well, three for us this season. Yeah. It matters. It and matters. I'm one of these people who I never belittle silverware because there are so many clubs that haven't tasted for 25, 30, 50 years. Mm. There's other clubs that, like Man City, who have that elite mentality of we win everything and they'll steamroll this competition every year and they'll collect their silverware and they'll pop the champagne and they'll celebrate and so I, what are you disagreeing with because i'm saying take i'm, I'm, you, take this I'm disagreeing with the importance no no you're right i'm disagreeing with the bit where you said maybe a year or two ago or in the past you just said play the kids i don't care mm. even back then i cared oh, even okay. when we were in the title okay, race okay, okay. i wanted to win this competition mm. because think, it's, it's silverware i man. think we've answered this yeah very much from the fans perspective because yeah. as i'm listening to you i'm understanding it and i can you know you want to mm. win everything you're yeah. in but let me put it to you that in April we're eighth ninth you know top six looks you know very distant at that time but we've won the League Cup is that enough for Arteta to remain in his role no no it's um because it's buying time as well because the FA Cup technically if you're being through if you didn't win the FA Cup this, this is the perspective to look now. at from our perspective we want to win this and yeah, it's yeah, important yeah. because it's one of two competitions we're in that we can win only one of two but then I don't want people to mistake us saying it's important with us saying it's important for Arteta. No, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll jump in really quickly and say, if we win, if we finish eighth, but we won the Carabao Cup, I'll, I'll look at the Carabao Cup day, the day we won it, as just a treasured Memory. part of our yeah. history. Yeah, yeah. And yes. that's it. It won't be a reflection on our season or where the team is or Arteta as a manager. Yeah, maybe I'll give him a few more brownie points for, great, another trophy. Another trophy that's two, yeah. cool. Um, but no, I'll look at that as uh, you know another banner that goes around the Emirates and yeah. another day that we'll remember at, at Wembley and a day I'll celebrate. But it won't define the yeah. season. And really, it, that's kind of what you'd say about the FA Cup when we won it. We finished eighth. We won it in 2020. Mm. I don't think anyone said that defined us. No one came out and going, "No, Arsenal actually had a great season because they won the FA Cup." No one yeah, said that. Yeah, they just said, "Fair play, you won the FA Cup, got back into Europe. What a great day! Let's celebrate it." So it's it's a very blurred, it's a balance one. It is, you know, it's, it's, it's a situation, situation. If that makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult. You're right in what you're saying there, James. It's, it definitely didn't define our season, but again, it's, it's a bonus. It's a trophy. Some people use some fans use it as as an argument. Well, Arteta's one tro one trophy, so you <laughs> <laughs> and that does and matter. That does matter. <laughs> it's yeah. the truth. I think we can agree from this conversation that it's very important for us fans. Yeah, but it's not so important for the project process. Mm. Yes, I yeah, think that's, that's a good the way. best way to look at it. Yeah, I want the oh, club yeah. to take it serious. I want to see the players really work hard at every, every level, every stage of this competition. Not take it as a joke, that's one thing. So yeah, yeah. It's yeah. important to me as a fan, it should be important to the players as well. Like, like yeah. it's a cup competition, it's a trophy. And plus, if we win this game, I know this is away from the cup. Obviously, North London Derby is on Sunday. If they win this game and they have the confidence to go in and do really well against Tottenham and get a result there, things start to kind of look a little bit different in my opinion. At least changes the mood of the club. And listen, mm. I've got no problem with seeing Bakaya Saka holding more silverware. That yeah, for me is only yeah, a good yeah. thing for a yeah. player like him. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I, I, we take, it's a long route yeah, to long get really. to what we think, but I'll, I think <laughs> yeah, you summed it up well. Yeah, different perspectives, you know, yeah, obviously true. the importance is different for different mm. people in different areas at Arsenal. Mm. Is it important to you, this cup? <clears throat> um, I'm kind of like you. The importance of this cup is more so this season than any other. Yep. I've very much been so vocal about my opinion of the League Cup and having two domestic cups in England and when I look at Spain or I look at Italy or mm, I look at other just, yeah. countries, it's just one main domestic cup. And that cup. makes it special, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. It's the one. Yeah, and I yeah. think it gives more if you take away the League Cup and maybe make that a championship and below right. level cup and then make the FA Cup, a, you know, uh, yeah. everyone and included. Yeah, yeah, and then maybe have the FA Cup and League Cup winners playing each other at the start of or the big end of the season. Well, something, you know. Mm, mm, mm. Um, but it's only one or two competitions we're in this season. <laughs> 
So you know, it's important. Yeah. You know, it's a great way. Uh, I was arguing with the United fans uh, in 2020. We won the FA Cup. Who had a better season? United finished third, or Arsenal won the FA Cup, finished eighth. I said Arsenal. They won. They won silverware. Mm. They won the FA Cup. So yeah. Arsenal did. Now I don't think the Carabao Cup holds that weight. No. So may, that's a much better debate. But FA Cup, I'm going. Yeah, FA Cup because yeah, yeah. we won it. Yeah. But who's the better team? Who has a better future? Who's looking like yes. they can go on? Yeah. And I think that's where the club need to. Well, not need to. You want to. You try and achieve both. Yeah. But that's where the debate hand gets in interesting. Hand would be perfect. Yeah. Yeah, be so important. That, you use that word important. And it's a really good word. So yeah. what's more important? I don't know. Yeah. But what's more successful? Always winning so silverware. Of course, it's a good breakdown. That's yeah. history, like that. isn't it, for you? Yeah. you know, it's history. In our memories, yeah. it's putting, you know. Mm. But listen, we usually go to Danger Man and um, key mm. battles yeah. around this time, but, mm. you know, I, I, I don't watch too much of Wimbledon. I haven't watched too much of them this season. Mm. But Chris has. If you don't know who Chris is, head over to Box to Box, where me and Chris, a Wimbledon fan, he writes the match day programmes. He's a journalist as well. Mm. Me and him delve into the game. He offers up some key battles and some um, mm. danger men to look out for. Ayo Basel being the main one, 19-year-old yeah, attacking yeah, midfielder, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, which would be an interesting one. So for danger man and key battles, head over to Box to Box and yeah, check that out there. Mm. Lineups, lads. Might as well get into some lineups. Yeah. Where are we starting with? I'm quite excited about mine. Um, so am I because it's yeah, it's, yeah so am I because I look at it and it's interesting. Mm. Okay. Mm, mm. Um, should I should I kick things off? You seem I, very excited feel, to, yeah. to give us to give us your eleven. Um, yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say on the day I know we, 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 you did the box box, but yeah, that Asal guy. I watched some bits of air, some only little bits, and he stood out as well. So it, what it, what your guy was saying was definitely right. He's seems like a tricky number ten. Very very quality is obviously not there at the end, but gets on the ball, confident, will drive at players, something to worry about. And Presley's also on loan from Brentford, mm. striker that we should work out for. And we've got to look out for their long throws into the box. Two centre-backs right. come up, you know. You so know it's a long day for That's something that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, we don't, yeah. Yeah. We don't so how strong are you lads going for this? Well, I don't know, have you got Tommy Asu in there? Because we need someone to win headers, so... Oh, uh, maybe I should. No, I haven't. <laughs> I'm, um, strong I'm enough f- to be happy with, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm going to yeah. fly through mine. Should get the job done. Leno comes in. Okay. Um, yeah. Deserves the chance to come back in and, and Ramsdale take your rest and all that's fine. Cedric a right back. Mm-hmm. Now my shock inclusion is Ben White at centre back okay. um, alongside Pablo Mari. Uh, he yeah. had obviously he had COVID. He missed game time. He came in slightly late. I know he, he played some of those preseason games, but not a lot of them. I just think get him in there, get him playing. Mm. Um, and Tavares at left back. Nice. That's my back four. Mm-hmm. I'm going for a midfield three because I want the team to be getting used to this system that Arteta is deploying now. Flowing a bit more. Get used to it, just from, from at every level of the, the, the squad and the club. Yeah. This, if this is what Arteta wants to do long term, try and get used to it. Maitland-Niles, Lokonga mm-hmm. and Charlie Patino. Now, now. Snap. I know. I swear. I know Charlie Patino. I've, I, I've seen some amazing highlights. But trust me, if you saw my highlights on a Sunday with some of the people <laughs> I play with, no offence, big up all of you. We'll be starting um, you against yeah, you'd be thinking I look great. <laughs> that, well, but, get James yeah, in there. What's yeah, get in there. Come on, free. But so listen, you've got to you've got to look at levels and all that. But he has looked incredibly bright. Um, and and I thought of getting El Nenny in there, but it felt too workman like in midfield, and I need a bit more quality. Yeah. So Patino comes in. Then my front three: Martinelli on the left, Lacazette up front. And Saka on the right. Saka, okay. I think he needs that confidence, and I'm not sure. Would you not say that, he's been over overplayed? Yes, but I'm not sure I'd play him in the North London derby. So that's mm. why I'd get. I know, don't look at me like that. That's why I'd get Saka. Yeah. Saka. Remember yeah. that? That's your guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Hey, check out Tattoo Inside where I fully defended him a lot. So yeah, fair, you know, fair. but that that's my team, and I think it's pretty strong. No, it is, and yeah, that's, that's, that should get the job done. There's a lot of similarities to my one. Should I yeah. go next then? Yeah. Yeah, go we've, we've got quite. We think, yeah, because I've got the same quite. A I'm going same four, two, well. three, one. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I had Leno in goal until I spoke to Chris, mm-hmm. and when Chris mentioned the long throws and the set pieces, I thought to myself, goalkeepers don't need that much of a rest. It'll be yeah. another good test for Ramsdale. Mm. Why not? You know, Fine. why not put him in there and get you know face another test? So I'm happy to do that. Yep. At the same time, Leno, you know, on the way out potentially, not signing mm. a new contract, be ruthless with it. Mm-hmm. You know, it is what it is. Play yeah, Ramsdale. no problem with that. Um, Cedric right back, mm-hmm. same actually same back four as you. Cedric right back, Tavares left back. Ben White, I put in there again for the test. Okay. Yeah. Long throws, set pieces. You know, he had a couple of dodgy moments against mm. Burnley, but you know, hopefully he comes into this game a bit more. Yeah. You know, balanced. Um, next to Pablo Marie. Okay. 
Why? Because I like Maria as a backup to Gabriel, mm, and I yeah. think when he, I do too. when he's given the chance, more often than not, he he has been composed and led well. Yeah, there has yeah. been a couple of games where yeah. yes, he has yeah. been part of a problem, but I'm happy. But overall. there's a good player in him. Yeah, I, think I, think people, so. I think he's been he's been criticised. Yeah, quite, I think the criticism quite, over the top. It's a bit unfair, from yeah. my yeah. opinion. But yeah, go on. A bit knee jerk. Um, yeah. The two in the middle, I'm going Lokonga and Patino. Um, now this, to me, even when I'm reading out now, it's a big risk because both young, you know, yeah. both haven't stamped their for at Arsenal Football Club senior level yet. But at the same time, I think, you know, Wimbledon, we're at the Emirates Stadium, the, the, the crowd will be buzzing. Yeah. They're going to be fully get behind, especially if you've seen a Lokonga and Patino in the middle mm. and take the game to the opposition, you know. Yeah, so yeah, I'd go with that. both. So um, what's people thinking for the North London derby? No one wants Lokonga to play? Check out the warm-up in a few days' time. Because, <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, I'm gonna be intrigued. My real answer I'm is I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Got, remember Lokonga didn't start against Burnley, so he, you know. But again, check the warm-up up because then we'll know a bit more. Mm. We'll see the full out of this game and yeah, so on. But at this is. moment, I'd start him in both. Okay, cool. Um, the three behind the striker, I'd go with Pepe on the right. I'd go with Martinelli on the left, and Emil Smith Rowe in the middle. Okay, um, wow, that's strong. I'm actually taking Saka out the limelight a little bit. Um, it's a choice of two, really. Either you play him to maybe find some confidence and morale if you think that's what's missing. Yeah. Or, in my opinion, I don't play him because I think he always has the confidence because he knows he's a top talent. And maybe he just needs to be taken now, given a bit of an extended rest. That's a good point. And going into Tottenham, there's very few players that you know were born and raised at this football club in North London. Mm. And that matters in the North London derby. Mm. Yeah. You know, um, He knows what it's about. Mm -hmm. He's watched them. Uh -huh. So I, I need players like that in. But I'd give Saka a rest against Wimbledon. Yeah, and up front, points. I'd go with Balogun. Um, oh, wow, no Lacazette. No Lacazette. Because, listen, I'm not, I'm not against Lacazette, but I just think to myself, Balogun's here, new contract, he didn't get a loan move. Where, where else is he going to play? exact yeah. same reason I was about to say when I spoke about him as well. With Lacazette, I mean, exactly, yeah. he's on the way out as well, similar to Leno. I'm, it, You've got any, me thinking. Any Balogun players has, on the way Balogun out. Balogun has to feature at some point. I don't understand. Like you just said there, sign the contract, um, like you said, there's no loan. We haven't. Heard, he went quiet. Yeah. He went quiet. But why? Like he's. We want to see more of him. I've yeah. seen what I've seen of him in the Europa League last season. I think he has great talent. He needs to play, Turkey. So I agree with you there. And I'm gonna. Uh, What's your team? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So Leno and goal. You nearly swayed me. I was staring at you. In the yeah, season. that I'm was really you, annoyed. Yeah, me. that was. I was like, shit. Yeah. You. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I was staring at yeah. you. Sugar. Yeah. I mean, that's just good reasons. Isn't it? Yeah. Good reason. I put Leno's that's because I spoke to Chris earlier. Yeah, exactly. So I would have played Leno before speaking to him as well. All right, cool. So that almost changed my mind. But you know, I've got it here. I've, I've chose it already. So Leno in goal, same back line. Which is weird that we've all picked the same back line. Cedric. It's slightly worrying. We all think White needs the game time. Do you know what I mean? But Listen, I thought White was okay the... against Burnley. A lot of people were on his back. I actually yeah, yeah. was fine. But um, it's still it, early the fact that we're all like, let's give him, let's give him another yeah. 90 just yeah. to. It's still early days. Yeah, though. We still want to see, of see more so, of him. Yeah. I want to see more of him. I think at Burnley, I had kind of the opposite there. I didn't think he had a great game. Um, but so I want to see more of him. Pablo Murray, we spoke about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We spoke about him already. Tavares as well in there. Now I've gone for four three three. Um, sitting for me, Maitland Niles. I think when he came on against Burnley, yeah, he well. was really good. He cleaned up he, well. Mm. He was so composed. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that from Maitland Niles. He was he was actually pretty much dictating when he came on, which is yeah. a surprise for me. I'm going to be really honest. I didn't expect that from him. So takes he, the talent to come on. And you think, oh, we don't miss Partey. Right. Yeah. And, and for 15, 20 minutes, he delivered he that. He did. He did well. Um, and then the two in front, Charlie Patino, there's been a lot of hype around him. He's been, he's, he's been training with the first team regularly. I think, I think he's actually, there's word that he will be involved um, either on the bench or in this game. So throw him in there. Why not? I want to see him. I think he's, I've heard so much good things about him. I want to see more of him. And he scored a great goal in the under 23s against United. Yeah, he that did. final goal was, he did. Oh, that was nice. Stinked to over. Oh, yeah. you can and, see and, and the Chelsea under 23s just smashed Chelsea. Mm. Sorry, the Arsenal under 23 just smashed There's Chelsea. There's certain players that even when they're running on the ball, you can see the it's, culture. Yeah. Right. And with Patino, he's got that his touch, yeah. his, his run, his dribbling ability, yeah. his technique mm. shooting, his Fluid. technique passing. It's mm. just, there's something about him. Yeah. You know, what's his background? No idea. Patino. Is it Italian? I'll look it up. Sounds it, doesn't it? All I know is he came from Luton. Um, for ten thousand yeah. pounds when he was young, but there was a big article about it. Like yeah, there was, it was, there was Arsenal signed eleven-year-old Charlie yeah. Patino, who was a Luton, big yeah. deal that we picked him up. Um, so we'll do our research on him, and, and you know we'll, we'll know a little bit. We'll, do you know what? We'll we'll cover it in the build-up. We'll do a little profile, player profile, because I imagine we'll know nearer the game yeah. whether he's going to be involved. Okay, so quickly, so I met Nas Patino, and then I've got Odegaard in there. I like him. I like Clyde Odegaard. Yeah, I can't can't help it. 
Like he's he's one of my faves right now. The way he just he dictates the play, he gets on the ball, he he works hard. He has I think he has that winning winning mentality. He's a leader. I, he? I really yeah. genuinely yeah. believe that. And from what I saw against Burnley, and I keep going back to that game, he really wants to get on the ball and and dictate as well as when Mendy last come over. Odegaard, I think for me, yeah, has to go in there. I want to see more of him. And he seems like he's got enough energy to play mm-hmm. that game and on Sunday. Then my front three, Pepe. On the right, the jury's still out for me on him. I still got um, a lot of questions. I don't think he was great against Burnley. I need to see more from him. He's going in. Um, I wouldn't start him against um, on the North London derby either, so that's why he's in there. Balogun up front, spoke about it. I need to see more of him. And Martinelli. Again, another player that's gone quiet. I don't think he's one of Arteta's faves. I don't know why, but I don't think he, he fancies him much. And I think he needs game time. I want to see more of Martinelli. I don't know why it's gone so quiet around him. He definitely has talent. We've seen it. Why is he not playing? Um, why is he not involved? So yeah, Martinelli. I'm going to save Saka. Same reasons um, I think you gave, and then Smith Rowe as well. He lacks fitness at times, match fitness um, in a sense. Smith Rowe, when he plays full nights, he gets tired. I think the midweek would kill him going forward onto the game against Sunday. I'll definitely play him for the North London derby. So I think rest him, save him for the North London derby. Okay. That's the youngsters, Saka and Smith Rowe. So yeah. Fair. Prediction time. Prediction. I'll start. I said 3 1 on box to box. Yeah, I said 3 1. Um, I'm confident, but I just think, you know, the, the threat they pose with set pieces and throw ins, it, uh, it worries me. We can achieve a clean sheet, mm. we should get a clean sheet, but I'm going to say 3 1. My exact thinking, literally word for word, that I think we'll, well, we should have enough firepower. I think it'll go fairly strong, like I think most of us have really. Yeah. Um, but I can sort of see us being a bit calamitous at the back. I don't know why, from yeah. set pieces, just. I can imagine us going to this game thinking, I score loads of goals and actually not really doing our job at the back. So after so the game that you saw against Burnley, they had loads of goals in that game. You still think we could concede from... Well, I think Leno will play and I, I don't think Mary dominates the way Gabriel does, though I like Mary. Mm. So, yeah, I don't know. Fair. Uh, yeah. Fair. Yeah. Um, 5-1, because I'm going to be here and I want to see a nice, oh, entertaining wow. game. And I want to see goals. So 5-1, we're going to con- <laughs> we'll probably concede for the same reasons as much as I just challenged you. <laughs> yeah, Leno and, and Mari a bit different to Gabriel yeah. um, and even Tomiyasu. I think he won so many headers um, against Bernie that he's not going to be involved. Um, mm. well, I don't know the lineup. There's be a chance for Arteta to, to open up and try and attack and score yeah. goals and show us what the vision looks show like. Show us the transition right. a bit more. So show us what we'll be left open a bit, I think. Yeah. Right. I agree. So 5 1 and a couple 3 1 there. Three W's, people. Thank you, Cecil. Thank you, James. Hope you guys have Sorry. enjoyed the warm up. Let us know your prediction in the comment below. Let us know your thoughts, lineups, all of that. What do you want to see? Does Charlie Patino start for you guys or does he come on and get a 30, 40 minute cameo? Let us know in the comments below. Hit the like button, share, and subscribe if you haven't. Love, people.